What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of The Block is Hot. Today, we're back with another interview. And today, we're going to be talking about Phoenix Arena. Now, Phoenix Arena has been a project that's been out there for a while now. I remember talking about this project months and months and months ago. And they actually have a lot of exciting things that are coming up soon as far as the development of their overall game. They have another mint coming up. It's just a lot going on with the project. So I thought it would be cool to have the team on today and learn a little bit more about what's going on. But yeah, welcome, guys. Did you guys want to introduce yourself to the block today and kind of go over your role in the project? Yeah, for sure. So um, first of all, thanks for having us. So um, I'm Marcus or Make. Um, I'm the uh, and this is Apex. The yeah, and the so co-founder. <laughs> we're co-founders of the project. Um, um, Olga is kind of on the more of the marketing side of things. Um, I, I'm an engineer by by my background, and so I'm in charge more of the you know, let's say the tech side of things. And then we kind of think of the, the vision as a whole, we think about that together, I would say. Um, so that's a super brief overview. Nice, nice. And how long have you guys been working on Phoenix Arena for? Because I remember this has come out a while ago now, like what even got you into the NFT space and how long have you been working on this? Yeah, for sure. So I can, I can give you a bit of a kind of backstory of how, how uh, we got here. So, you know, um, it really, it's, it's been a personal journey for the both of us. And, you know, on my side, um, I kind of got into crypto in 2017, um, started paying attention to Cardano already back then. Um, and so, you know, being working around the crypto sphere um, for a while now, and um, last summer, um, we, we both started looking into what's going on with NFTs, um, and, and, uh, noticed that, you know, that NFTs are starting to become a thing on the Cardano blockchain. And yeah, so we, we started, um, minting some NFTs, flipping them a little bit, collecting, collecting some NFTs and, um, you know, quickly started thinking about the idea of, you know, what if we would, what, how about developing our own project? So kind of back at that point, uh, you know, let's say September, uh, September last year, you know, we had the first first projects coming out um, on Cardano, and they were all just you know PFP projects, and we started thinking about the concept of like, well, how could we maybe take this a little bit further somehow? Um, so that was that was really the starting point, and so you know, we started thinking about okay, well. Um, what else could we do with these NFTs? And then uh, we're, we're both gamers and um, we started thinking about, um, you know, tie, developing some kind of game and how that could tie into, um, into the NFTs that we're developing. So yes, then started, um, started touring around with the concept in September last year and October of last year kind of really kicked things, um, started to kick things off um, with, um, with everything. Nice. And for those that don't know about Phoenix Arena, what's kind of like the general overview of this project? Because you guys have done a couple mints now. I actually have your guys's like wallpaper thing in the in the background. But yeah, can you like share your screen and just like explain to us like what exactly Phoenix Arena is? At its core, um, the idea is that we're developing a um, a uh, blockchain based game on in the Cardano ecosystem. So we have NFTs that you can use as characters in the game. Uh, the core game concept is an um, auto battle game. So you choose your characters for your squads, you choose the skills for those characters, um, skills, items, and once you've uh, chosen your team configuration, you your team battles against another other team um, in an automated fashion, um, and um, yeah, that's kind of. And then you know they 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 hack and slash at each other um, uh, to until one of the one of the teams remains. So that's kind of like the core gameplay concept. And then you know, so we're we're showing here on the screen, we're showing a um, kind of like a prototype screenshot from from the game. And so you can see a couple of things here, you know, on, on the left, we have two characters for one team and then on the right, two characters for the other team. 
And so you can see these skill card sequences, for example, that um, each of these characters have. So um, yeah. Um, so the idea is, you know, you select um, these skill card sequences for your characters, and um, that's then they then they execute that automatically in the battle. But then around that core um, gameplay, we have the kind of meta game, which is well, how do I choose everything, right? And um, what what strategies do I like employ to try to beat my opponents? How do I level up my skill cards? How do I level up my items? How do I obtain more skill cards, more items? Um, yeah, and then the in terms of like game modes, the game is going to have a ranked game mode, which is um, kind of the Uh, so we have a couple of different game modes. The, the core of the game is going to be a ranked game mode where basically it's like you're battling against, um, um, you're placed in a bracket with, for example, nine other squads. And so then you would have automated battles against these nine other squads. And then if you end up at the top of your bracket, you get promoted to uh, the next tier. And if you're at the bottom of your bracket, you drop down to the lower tier. And then if you have um, higher, um, you know, if you're higher up in, in the leaderboards, in the tiers, then you're able to get more rewards um, in terms of like, you know, the, our in-game utility token, um, items and skill cards and so on. So essentially, because you guys have already released these ma these maxes or ma uh, the, little, the little guys, right? So you guys have already released yeah, yeah. those and then you release the divers a little bit later on. Later on. And now yeah. this character in the middle is the Fluffies, correct? That's exactly. going to launch soon, this month, I believe. Now, essentially, are you going to be able to own these different characters? And then in the gameplay, you're going to have like different abilities that you're going to be able to choose. And you essentially are going to be able to fight like other players that also have kind of their teams. And then depending on if you win or not, you could potentially get your Wari token and then like rank up in this whole tournament process. Is that pretty much? Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a really good way of, of putting it. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't really talk too much about how the NFTs really relate to all of that. But like you said, so we've already sold these two NFTs, uh, Max and Diver, and we're going to have this third NFT sale of, of Fluffy. And so the whole idea is that these NFTs that you're obtaining, you know, kind of going back to how our story began, you know, they, they, they have that, you know, classical PFP utility that you can have them as NFTs and in, in that sense, but then they also tie into the game in that um, each of the NFTs provides you with a um, character identity that like basically a character that you can use as a part of the game. So yeah, one of the important things to understand about the NFTs um, is that besides the kind of like being a character that you can, you can use, um, each of the items that you obtain from the NFTs that you purchase um, would be items for your inventory that you then you can use to compose um, the characters that you're using in game. So, so really just kind of like thinking about it in a classical RPG kind of sense, you know, for example, if this was your uh, Diver NFT that you, you have, um, that Diver NFT would entitle you to a, um, a sword NFT, which then you, you would have in your inventory. Um, and then you could use that sword NFT um, as an item that your character then could use in game. So you're not stuck to the configuration that exists with um, the NFTs that you're dropped, but rather it's kind of like you can think about it a little bit like um, rolling a bunch of mystery boxes for these different item slots. So, so how exactly would it work? Like right now, let's say I go to the JPEG store, I see one of these divers and it looks like this one and I buy it and now I have all of this equipment. Would this equipment yeah. then give me different stats and abilities when it comes to the battling? And you're saying there's ways to interchange this gear or whatever one you get from JPEG store, that's the items it has. No, so it's, 
um, it, it's inter interchangeable so you can change them. So the idea is that once we get closer to launch of the game, what we'll do is we'll have kind of like a, um, we, we have a reward distribution system. So what we'll do is that basically you'll be able to um, retrieve each of these assets that your NFT owns as individual NFTs. Oh. And then, you know, in the same way that we can recognize what's in your wallet in terms of um, in terms of these 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 PFP PFP entities, um, you could then use those um, those individual, like for example, sword NFT as a part of your inventory then to compose uh, to just select that sword for your character. So essentially. If I had like 30 different characters, I would then be able to interchange any of the items that I had across all those characters? Yes. So all those items would become part of your inventory. That's actually pretty insane. And each of these different items, like do they have like different abilities or is it just like, a, like an overall stat thing? So like, let's yeah. say I have this one specific sword that will have a special ability attached to it. Yeah, so there's there's kind of two things going on there. So um, another thing that's um, um, kind of that's important to understand about the game is that we have um, we have classes. So okay, so you're asking about well, how do these how do these different items play into the game, right? So one thing is um, each of these items uh, will have some kind of um, you know, just base stats attributes, you know, for example, um, it might increase your health or your, um, your attack speed or your damage, um, or, and so on, you know, modify those, those base statistics to give you a boost. And obviously if you have like the, 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 the um, higher level of an item, the, the more rare of an item, um, the more those stats are going to be boosted, but, um, not we also have classes that is a part of the game so here we have an overview of the different classes that we have so we have warrior class rogue class and a um and a mage class um, as the kind of three three classes and so each of those items can also tie in to each of those classes where you know um an item that's gonna, gonna belong to a mage is gonna have its item statistics stats in a way where it supports a mage build and um, mage skills, or it might even or it might even have like a specific interaction. Like let's say, for example, you want to use uh, one of the mage skill cards. It could be that one of those items, um, you know, will boost that specific skill card. Nice. Now, are you able to put on whatever I? <sighs> Like, because there's going to be three different characters that you guys have released, like NFTs. You have the divers, the maxes, and now these fluffies. Are there going to be items that you can only, like, if I have an item for a diver, will that item only be available for my diver characters? Or would I be able to use the same item for a fluffy? And then as far as these different classes go, these classes are all based on the items that you have attached. Or are these like spells or abilities within those classes that the weapon would unlock or whatever item you have would unlock? So it's actually the skill cards which determine your class. So you choose your skill card sequence. And um, basically, we have 10 skill cards uh, for each of these subclasses. So 10 skill cards for Barbarian, 10 skill cards for Paladin. And you can choose. Uh, for any of the characters, which class you would want that character to be. And so, and you can choose a combination of skill cards from the different subclasses. So let's say, you know, I have a max and um, I think it mo makes mo most sense for, um, for my max to be a rogue, then um, I would look at the different rogue skill cards from Assassin and Hunter. And then, um, then I I'd choose a skill sequence uh, like sequence of those skill cards that makes um, that makes sense to me. 
So, and, and basically, but basically it's those skilled cards that actually kind of like determine your class. But then um, some of the items will only be available for specific skill, uh, for, for, um, for specific classes. Um, so then that's something that you, that you would need to think about as well. Well, wow, awesome. And when you're putting together your character, you're pretty much going to be able to pick these different skill cards and, and mix and match them. Like, am I going to be able to have abilities from the barbarian? Like, can I have barbarian abilities as well as mage abilities all within one team? Or would I have to like choose, okay, this is the class. So within a, in a character, you can only choose one of the three subclasses at a time. So you can either choose warrior, rogue, or mage, um, but then you can uh, choose between the subclasses for that um, for that character. But then um, we're gonna have ga two game modes. One is like one versus one, and that you know that might be what we'll first do, for example, for our beta test. But then we'll have a two versus two player mode as well. And so in a two versus two player mode, if you're choosing two characters then um, the, you could mix and match in that, you know, one of your characters is, um, is, a, is a mage um, and your other character would be a warrior, for example. Dude, this is actually super cool, man. <laughs> like, I, I love how much customability it is in it. Like, it reminds me a little bit of like Axie Infinity where you'll have like the different characters and they'll have some different abilities like that. But this is really yeah. cool because the more NFTs you own, the more items you'll have, the more options you'll have to customize each character. And exactly. then you can kind of strategize with the different abilities. So it's not exactly. just this normal RNG game. Like there's actually a lot of custom customization when it comes to building your team together. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the whole idea behind it. That it's like we have these, it's, it's kind of like um, you want to build these different tools or get these different tools as a part of your toolkit in building your strategy and like build designing your strategy in such a way that it's most effective against um, the players that you're going to be battling against. And, you know, I think like, I think one of the things to highlight with um, our concept, for example, if you, if you would compare it to Axie Infinity is um, our game concept, I think it, it caters more both to kind of like uh, a bit more of a casual player in that, you know, if you just want to have a casual, casual game, log in for, you know, 15 minutes, have, um, you know, do a couple of quick matches, see how your uh, ranked uh, matches went, um, you know, just tweak your, your strategy a little bit for your next matchups, um, you know, see kind of like what, like, what, how did you level up after the games or what items did you get? Um, you know, you can lo just log in for a little bit and do that. Um, and that, you know, playing the game, unlike something like Axie Infinity, the idea is that we don't want it to be this kind of like infinite grind for you to be able to actually, you know, be a part of the game. But at the same time, um, we also, um, you know, the, the, the goal is to have this, then this depth into the game in terms of the strategy. So like, so, you know, that if you do want to play the game in a little bit more of a competitive sense, you know, and climb up the leaderboards, um, that you can, that there is that dimension of depth in terms of the different strategies that you can employ to try to um, beat your op opponents. Now, when you are battling other people, how are these battles going to work? Um, and also like what sort of reward structure are you building in with the whole entire token that you guys are releasing? Um, wait, sorry, can you, can you repeat that question? Sorry. Yeah. So I was just wondering like how the gameplay is, is going to, to take place. I know you had said like some of it was kind of like an mm -hmm. automated thing and then yeah. how you guys are going to incorporate your token. Like, okay, sure. Gameplay. Yeah, so the, the gameplay, um, like you said, it's it's automated, right? So really the, the game revolves around all the decisions that you make um, make outside really this, for example, like this core um, um, core battle game screen that you can see here. 
you know, this, this core battle game screen is basically for you to understand um, kind of like what is the impact of the different choices that you're making in terms of, you know, building your squad, selecting your items and selecting your skill cards. Um, but yeah, the, um, the, it's, you know, the, the concept is to be kind of like, like if anyone's ever played football manager, uh, if I think comparing, for example, football manager and FIFA, um, FIFA is a football game where you're actively playing the team, playing, you know, with a team against another team. Um, our game is not really about that. It's more like football manager where you're the manager for your team. Um, and, and yeah, that's kind of the concept. Um, so that was the first question. Then the second question about um, kind of like, how does our token play into this? And how does the, um, how's the token economy uh, work, work? And like, what are, what are the rewards that you have in this game? So um, we have a um, utility token for, uh, for the game called um, Wari. And so, um, in the game, Wari will be used um, as a token um, to upgrade items, to upgrade skill cards, and to um, will also have like purchasing mystery boxes, for example, um, to, so to acquire additional items. So those are a couple of the pathways of like how you can spend the Wari token. Um, then in terms of how you can acquire it, the the main way will be from participating in the game. So you know when you're playing the game, um, you're you're having battles. Um, the higher up you are on the leaderboards, after each of the games that you have, um, you'll get you'll get chests after reaching certain kind of like experience milestones, and um, then you'll get Wari token from those chests. So that's the active pathway to um, earn Wari. And, but we also have a passive pathway uh, to earn Wari. Uh, and this was kind of like something we wanted to do to you know, give back to our early supporters a little bit so that they have a little bit of a head start in, in the game, let's say, that people who, um, so currently the NFTs that we've sold, um, the max, and diver characters, and now when Fluffy comes out, uh, the Fluffy character as well, um, they've been able to um, obtain this this Wari token passively. So currently, every single NFT that we have is accumulating a small amount of Wari um, per day that they will then be able to use in the game for the for the things that I mentioned. Now, are those if I went and bought some of the current NFTs out there now, would I still get all of those tokens that have been accumulating? Like when you guys do your whole claim? Yeah. So actually, if you go to, um, if you go to, you know, JPEG store right now, and if the, if the um, NFT has, has been on the marketplace for let's for a little while. You know, let's say it's been there for a day. Um, you can go check on our website how much. Actually, yeah, I can I can show that. So if we go to phoenixarena.io, we can go to collections, and then if we go to explore diver, for example. Oh, well, here we can see that there's diver two two seven one. So if, for example, if Diver2271 was on JPEG store and let's say it's been there for a day and you see that it has uh, 415 Wari on our website, then um, the person, you know, then if you would buy that NFT, once it's in your wallet, you would be able to claim the rewards associated um, with the Diver2271 NFT. Because how, how our reward um, system works is that that it's NFTs that um, accumulate the staking rewards um, or the well accumulate the Wari token rather rather than the wallet that owns the NFTs. Awesome, dude! This is great. Like you, it's nice that you already have all of this built out already. 
So anyone can go on the site and already see all of these different rewards. Now with the, with the Wari token, you said it was mostly for upgrading these different items, unlocking abilities, stuff like that. Like what's kind of the, the roadmap and timeline with these different things? Like if someone, if someone's buying some of these today, what's, what's kind of like the roadmap and timeline of the different things that you're releasing? Yeah, sure. So I have to say that we've been a little bit um, delayed from what we initially planned, um, you know, um, after given the kind of current bear market. Um, but we're going to have some content that we're that people are going to be able to interact with already in Q4. And the, the goal is to have um, a um, proper version um, up in Q1. So we're, we're currently um, adding a couple of people to the team. And like one of the things that, you know, um, one of the things that I feel like we still need to think about a little bit more, for example, is the, you know, we have all of these items and all of these items and skill cards need to have um, statistics. And so, you know, I want to, so that, that's like one of the, one of the subjects that we're currently, for example, looking into. Nice. Now, right now you guys have the two NFTs have already been released and sold. You guys have this third mint with the fluffies, I believe it was like on the 25th of this month. Now, yeah. what, after that sale happens, you know, is there, what, what exactly is like the order of events? Like, would it then next be, okay, here are the items you have. You can customize your characters. Then it would kind of be, some of the beginning gameplay, then there would be new items in the future, new abilities using the token. Like what's sort of like the, the, the direction, I guess. Yeah. So um, yeah, the first step right now is the, uh, or kind of like the next step that we have major milestone is the fluffy drop. And so that's going to be bring, bringing this new character. Um, and then the, one of the next things that we'll we'll have in Q4 is, um, you know, we 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 we're we're hoping to have or we're we're aiming to have kind of um, you know a, 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 some some of these aspects from the game that you could kind of test out. Um, um, for example, quick matches with your character against um, an AI, or and and then we'll see, you know, adding some gamification to that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, that's, that's the, the next um, major, major milestone that we have now. But like you said, before that, uh, one of the things that we're, we're going to do is, um, you know, we, we will, we can add this di um, distribution of the item NFTs of our characters um, before that already. So I think that's actually one of the things that we'll, um, we'll, we'll have before that as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I like, I like what I'm seeing. It, it's cool to like start seeing these different things come to life. And when I was checking out the white paper and just seeing like how it could potentially look, it, it, it's pretty cool. It's exciting. Like, I feel like the Cardano space, especially like the NFT side of things is lacking like some sort of game or, you know, some sort of playability aspect. So this could definitely yeah, be sure. one of the, this could definitely be one of those cool games where you can collect these different NFTs. You can unlock these various abilities, try to figure out the meta of, you know, trying to combine different pieces of armor or different weapons together, try to like make your team really high level and, if you guys can make it something that people want to play and now all of a sudden there's an incentive to play and get these tokens to upgrade your characters, like it could be something that is really like really successful, you know? Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you, you feel the same way. <laughs> For sure. Now, I guess like kind of my next question here is, what else is, what else are you guys working on? You know, like, I know that you guys are doing some collabs and stuff. We might actually be one of those collabs. Um, 
but yeah, like what, what's kind of the, the next things here? Yeah. You know, like, I, I think you, you mentioned something that, um, that I'm quite excited to talk about. So we have, we definitely have some collaborations going on with, um, with the fluffy character. And so, um, I'm happy to announce on the behalf of both of us that one of the, one of the, um, projects that we're having a collaboration with is, um, is none other than jelly cubes. Let's go. <laughs> so let me, here's just, I got a couple of, a couple of teasers. You know, there we have a little teaser trailer and for the first sneak peek, sneak peeks of the characters and the traits, here we have a uh, uh, fluffy with a jelly cube ax and a jelly cube backpack. Got a, we got another one with uh with the uh, jelly cube launcher here um and one more one you have the different variation we got a bit of a <laughs> jelly cube launcher variation there dude heck yeah dude these look so cool <laughs> like it, yeah like i'm actually i'm actually really like I, I i think these turned out really cool as well yeah, when that when you guys showed these, I was like, dude, these are these are sick. So everyone watching that's into jelly cubes, the, these are absolutely cool. And um, you know, when I was when I was talking to the team, I was like, it, it, it's cool that you guys are getting different projects involved in in what you're building here. And it would be dope to have like some jelly cube stuff. So it's cool that you guys can incorporate different NFTs and different designs from other projects. Well, and sure. one of the things that um, we're doing on our end to try to support the project too is that anyone that mints one of these special jelly cube versions will actually from our end get airdropped one week uh, access into the block investment group uh, as an NFT. So you'll be able to spend a week in the group. And I think there's actually some additional tokens or something like that from your guys' end. Yes, that's right. So any jelly cube fluffy will earn um, two x like the worry re rewards. So kind of double worry worry rewards. Um, you know. So so <laughs> I think I think the jelly cube fluffy traits are definitely going to be a pretty hot thing on the block. Dude, <laughs> I definitely <laughs> have to get I, I definitely have to get one just so I can use the jelly the jelly gun liquid ability and and, yeah. and win in the Phoenix Arena. Now, for are sure. you guys like for planning sure. on like trying to get some of these art collabs with some of the other projects in the space too? Because I know that was one of the things that was talked about and like even this image in the background, have you guys reached out to some projects as well? Yeah, do I, yeah, we have a couple of other um, projects that we're collabing with. So one of the, one of the projects is Melting Moon Boys. Um, I'm just thinking if I have any, I, I don't, I would have to like, well, if you look at our, actually, if I go to our Twitter, that's a pretty good option. Yeah, good. So besides the um, Jelly Cube collaboration, we have a couple of other collaborations that we're really excited about. So the first um, collaboration that we have is with, dun, 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 with, um, with Melting Moon Boys. So yeah, I absolutely love the art from Nelson Moon Boys, and I'm, I'm really happy that we have this um, collaboration with them. And so here, for example, you can see a um, a fluffy with a uh, green Melting Moon Boys face. Um, and here we have another example um, that's a fully kitted Melting Moon Boys. So Melting Moon Boys jacket, Melting Moon Boys shield, Melting Moon Boys dagger, and and face. Um, that and looks then, really good. <laughs> like that looks really good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like I'm um, honestly, I, I feel like you know we've been so I, like I have to give a shout out to our um, to our artist Mano Vila. Um, he he doesn't speak uh, English, he only speaks Spanish. Um, so you know it's a little bit difficult for us to have him join these these types of calls, for example. But I got to give him a sh huge shout out. He's um, it's you know it's been so it's been so good working with him um and i feel like it also like developing these um our nfts 
um, the art has been improving every single time that we're, we're developing something. And like you said, yeah, I, I absolutely love this uh, melting moon voice, Fluffy. Dude, that, lo that looks sick, man. And that's another thing we haven't even touched on in this project yet, just because it, like, it is a huge utility you guys are building. But the art of the project mm -hmm. looks pretty cool, too. And they all have unique styles. You know, like you had like the little, you can kind of see the little mad phoenixes here. And then you had the divers, which was a completely different art concept as well. And now you're yeah. having another different art concept where they all kind of have the same feel, but yeah. they have their own uniqueness to them. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, I mean, you know, I, I said kind of at the beginning of this conversation that, you know, we, we started from the point of like, well, we have this like PFP NFT and how can we take that further, right? And I think like our conversation, for example, has revolved then mostly around the game concept and how these NFTs tie into that game concept. But I think the artwork is like, especially for Fluffy is really cool in and of itself. Um, so I hope, hopefully people also kind of evaluate our projects um, like from that lens. Um, that lens alone as well. No, for sure. So you've got one with Moon Boys, Melting Moon Boys, which is honestly a, a big up and coming project. They've been doing really well. And then you've got one with Jelly Cubes. Do you guys have another collab that you guys are, are doing too? Yeah. yeah. And so another collaboration that we have is with um, none other than Cardania. So um, I, Cardania is another really cool a uh, project building in the Cardano ecosystem. And so here we have a fully kitted uh, fluffy Cardania um, um, example. So it's got the got a Cardania warlock outfit, Cardania sword, uh, Cardania shield, um, hair, horns, and even 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 the faces Cardania themed. So yeah, that's another um, another collaboration that we're really excited about. Um, so one of the things that's also uh, quite unique about these um, Cardania uh, collaborations is that each of the um, each of the NFTs that we have for Diver and Fluffy, um, who own Cardania themed items, they will they also receive um, rad tokens. Um, you, you, you receive um, rad tokens passively for, um, for owning those NFTs in the same way that you um, earn our reward tokens. Dude, that's super cool to build in that collab, like utility collab um, as well. You know, with us, with the membership pass and then with them being able to do their utility token too, it's, it's cool to be able to get collabs together like that. And would you guys ever like consider doing like more collabs once the, the game is actually launched and somehow integrating that sort of thing? Like potentially Definitely. new weapons and upgrades that you can buy with the Wari token might be collabed with another project? 100%, 100%. You know, I think, um, um, I, you know, I'm hoping for our game to be this kind of um, platform where we can where we can collaborate with other projects and bring other projects in uh, as a part of our game for sure. That's awesome, man. Well, did I guess to kind of finish here? Did you guys want to just give the details of of the mint? You know, what do people yeah, have sure. to know for these yeah. fluffies? Yeah, I think that's the kind of mand mandatory thing that we also have to mention here. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we have our uh, fluffy mints coming up on uh, September 25th, Sunday, September 25th. Um, so there's going to be a limited supply of 5,000 fluffies available, and um, the mint price is going to be five ADA for a single fluffy. And if you're lucky enough to get a bundle, um, you can buy five and then you would get a sixth one, sixth one free and then you would get a you know small discount um, basically because you're getting that sixth one for free. Nice. And is this the last sale that you guys are doing for Phoenix Arena as far as characters or are there a few more drops planned? Well, so this is definitely the last one that we have currently planned before, um, before we have the initial release of the game. And then how, you know, like 
the core the concept does you know we have these different characters and we have different classes and the idea is that we we will expand those characters and classes um over time and because that's a mechanism that brings richness to the game um but we're going to be also mindful of how we do that um because you know for for people who are purchasing these nfts we also don't want to uh just you know flood the market with all of these um, all these additional um, characters coming out all the time. Um, but we've got some ideas of how we can, you know, manage that balance. And um, yeah, it should be good. Dude, exciting stuff. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Uh, you know, it, it's always nice to see different projects in the space that are trying to build something. And you definitely have come a long ways as far as the different characters, uh, the beginnings of the gameplay and and just some of the other concepts there so i'm excited to see you know what comes up next for you guys and i'm excited to like mess around with the strategy a little bit too uh and trying to figure out like the best team comp because that is actually something i do enjoy doing is like figuring out the strategy and the setup for things so yeah mm, for sure for sure but yeah, did you guys want to finish off by saying anything? Uh, I guess any reasons why the people listening should invest today or invest on the 25th, I guess. Um, I feel like I feel like we said so many reasons why you should invest that it's like hard to like pick that one reason. But, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm personally really excited about the concept. I think um, you know, it's going to, it's going to be something that's really fun for people. And, um, yeah, I think, I think we're gonna, once, once we, um, release some of that content, we're going to, we're going to start getting some traction. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, thanks, thanks for, thanks for having us on this call. It's, it's truly been a pleasure. Um, so yeah, really thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no thanks problem guys. Much. And, uh, Thank you to everyone that's listening in today. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about their project, I'm going to have their Twitter as well as their Discord in the description. And yeah, I hope everyone here has an awesome day.